Hello guys. Now I've been streaming for over 10 years and this is my fifth gaming setup video. Uh, visually, this room hasn't changed much since the last one, but my hardware and peripherals have taken a leap in the last few months with some of the upgrades I've made. And I thought I would share with you all the stuff I now use to game, stream and make videos. And all the links will be down in the description below. So let's get straight into it. Now, the first most obvious thing will be the Asus 240Hz OLED 1440p monitor. Uh, the color vibrance, the contrast, and the ghosting is definitely an upgrade from my previous screen. And if you look at the non-OLED screens, you can clearly see the change. However, it being OLED hasn't changed my gameplay dramatically. Like, it's a vibrant and clear image that makes some of the areas easier to see, but at its current price point, I think if you're just getting into PC gaming, other 1440p monitors with similar latency will still be better value. But if you're someone that visually wants the best of the best, this is it. Up next is the new addition that has had the largest impact to my setup and improved my gameplay. And this is the Wooting 60 gaming keyboard. So to everyone else, it might just seem like your regular keyboard. And with a normal board, when you press a key, the key doesn't actuate until it hits the base of the switch and then doesn't deactivate until the switch is decompressed, right? But with this keyboard, the key activates almost instantly once you start pressing the key down and then it deactivates the millisecond you start lifting your finger. So this means that you can have lightning fast movement changes, especially strafing, sliding, jumping faster than others. And this is definitely something I can feel the benefit from in games like Warzone, where if you don't master the movement and changing directions as rapidly as possible, you will lose fights for simply not reacting fast enough. What I will say though, is that this keyboard is purely for competitive gamers trying to get an edge. If you're new to mouse and keyboard, you will constantly accidentally press keys from the light actuation. It's just even little touches. And the 60% configuration means you lose access to a lot of shortcuts from regular keyboards. So you can't even Alt and F4. Uh, general use is a little frustrating and I'm still waiting for a 10 keyless version of this. I 100% recommend it if you want the competitive edge if you're using it for anything else other than gaming, just get a fast 10 keyless mechanical keyboard instead. Another upgrade I made this year that I do think is worth it for anyone is the headphones. So my Corsair Virtuoso headset was falling apart, so I decided to look for new alternatives. First, I tried the Sennheiser HD 599 open bags. And honestly, I don't know how anyone uses open back headphones because I couldn't hear a damn thing if anything was happening around me. So I gave those away and I tried the Audio-Technica M50X closed cup headphones, thanks to a recommendation from Tomo. And for me, this headset has been absolutely perfect for the last year I've used it. I'm not an audio expert, but this has given me consistent directional sound for hearing footsteps and gunshots in game. Perfect for games like Warzone, tactical shooters, I often hear the distant sounds of players and vehicles way before my teammates, and that's without any custom EQ settings. Great value, great sound, comfortable, and if these ever break, I'll probably be buying them again. Now for my mouse. So I've always preferred the lightest mouse possible, and I've been using the Logitech G Pro Superlight for about two years now, literally worn away the logo. It's easily the best mouse I've ever used. Super lightweight at 60 grams, zero lag even on the wireless, perfectly shaped for the palm grip, and the battery lasts about a week of continuous use. Recently, they released a new version, the Superlight Pro 2, and I decided to give it a go a few weeks ago. Now, if you compare the two mice, you might notice that they're extremely similar. And that's because the only difference between the two of them is two grams in weight and a longer battery life. And whilst I love the fact that I don't have to change my mouse or charge my mouse for almost two weeks, my advice to you is to get the original Superlight as it's great value basically functions the same as the Superlight 2 with a slightly shorter battery life. Highly recommend it. Now up next, let's talk about stuff that I've continued to use for about three years without changing. So long-term usage. So first off, this comically large mouse mat. I think I had this in my last video. I still use it to this day. 
I've tried to go down to smaller pads. I've even tried hard surface mats, but they never offer the space that I want. I need the full height and width to fit my keyboard and mouse. And I sometimes do use the entire height when you're controlling recoil for like a large magazine. And then my stream PC mouse uses the end of it as well. Either way, I've never had an issue with mouse tracking or the surface degrading after about five years. I've spilled shit on it, machine washed it multiple times, still perfectly smooth. If you have any suggestions for large mat alternatives, the comments are open. Now, for one of my most expensive individual purchases of the past 10 years, what I'm sitting in right now is the Herman Miller Embody Gaming Chair. The most comfortable chair I've ever sat in for 10 hours a day. Was it worth the value as a content creator expense? Absolutely. Would I buy this chair if I wasn't in full-time content creation? Probably not. One huge tip I always give people with any type of gaming chair though, and this has helped me a lot, is that you can easily improve your posture whilst gaming by simply pushing yourself into your desk to the point where you can't unstraighten your back. And now if you get used to this position whilst gaming, you can basically game without subconsciously slouching for hours. And trust me, your back will thank you later. So look, I, I literally, I can't, even if I wanted to slouch, I'm stuck with my back straight, but that's what you want. Next up, the dynamic microphone, which is the Electro Voice RE20 XLR, still going strong after five years, running through the Go XLR mixer. However, the mixer is something that I'm considering replacing soon due to the fact that the company that makes it has removed the team that updates its software. So I'm considering moving to the Elgato XLR interface instead. And talking of Elgato, even though I'm no longer sponsored by them, I'm still using a ton of their products, which should be a good sign. I replaced my Rode mic arm with an Elgato low profile arm. And this means there's not a huge contraption sticking out of this from the side of my desk and I get a lot more real estate from it. I also replaced my unbranded acoustic foam with the foam panels from Elgato, the Elgato Wave panels. Do they make a big difference to audio? I think so, and they certainly look nice, but honestly, the best thing to do for less echoey sound in a room is just fill it with carpets and soft furniture. Wooden floors that I now have in this room did make it a little bit harder for me. I'm sure you can hear a bit more echo, but it was that or have tons of moths flying around eating everything, so I had no choice. Now, the other Elgato products that I still use daily are the Elgato key lights that keep me lit during my streams and of course this video. And they're controlled by a Stream Deck XL, which is just behind my keyboard. The key lights I've had for almost five years with no issues. They're set to like 10% so they don't blind me. And as for the Stream Deck XL, it's nice to have every single button on one screen. So there's no need to switch folders or anything like on the smaller versions. And it controls OBS scenes, some moderation actions, and the lights, and that's it. It's nothing crazy. Now, a company that does still sponsor me is, of course, PC Specialist. And they didn't ask for a shout out in this video, but since they have been making my gaming PCs for the past four years, I think a cheeky spotlight is allowed. My current PC build is an RTX 4090 with an Intel 13900K, 64 gigabytes of RAM, wrapped up in a Corsair IQ 5000T case. And as you can imagine, having a PC that's reliable and consistent for streaming is incredibly important to me, and they've nailed it so far. And they are currently building me a maxed out streaming PC for AV1 multi-streaming, which is the max quality you can get in video encoding. So keep an eye out for that in the near future. My current streaming PC is just a Frankenstein of old parts with an i7-8700K RTX 2070, in the first ever PC case I built from 10 years ago. And it's still going, uh, but it's certainly struggling at times. And then moving on to the desk, which is still the same one from the last video. It's an Ikea Idison, 160 centimeter. It's sturdy, it has more than enough space for me and my peripherals, uh, but the desk has been solid for about five years now. It doesn't wobble. And if you go for some of the cheaper Ikea desks, some of them just aren't as stable, which I've definitely experienced myself. I've been looking around for a new desk, maybe even a standing version, but so far I don't see the need to get a new one. And then lastly, on the hardware side, I am still using the ancient Sony A5100 camera with an Elgato Cam Link as my main camera. They don't even sell this camera anymore, and I've been using it every day without fail for about four years, 
and I'm probably going to keep using this until it fails because it's just so reliable. I'm still waiting for a plug and play webcam that offers the same detail as a mirrorless camera, but I just don't think we're there yet. And now lastly, one little piece of hardware that I use daily that I thought was going to be a gimmick, but ended up being amazing was this right here, which is the Ember mug. Now I've been recording this video for about two hours and the drink that was in it was still hot about five minutes ago. If you like hot drinks and you want your drinks to stay longer than about 10 minutes warm, this will work for you. Now I will say that the battery doesn't last forever. It's about two hours of keeping your drink warm if it's not on the charger. And I kind of wish I had the larger version because this one only holds 250 milliliters. But this has been working solidly for about a year, especially while streaming. It's a shame you can't dishwash it because it stains very easily, but definitely worth it for long-term use. And I think that just about covers all the products that I use and recommend. If there's anything else from my setup that I didn't cover, then just leave a comment and I'll try and get back to you. As I mentioned, all the products from this video will be linked down below. They are affiliate links, but I've not been told to promote anything specific as these are all my personal opinions and preferences. I'm extremely privileged to be able to afford this setup and I couldn't imagine having something like this 10 years ago from when I started. So thank you to all the people that have supported me thus far to get to this point. And if this video helped you at any point, consider leaving a like or subscribing. And of course, since it's almost time, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Cheers for watching. See you soon.